come have, as we have these last few months to a moment of confession, and today one of our own comes with his confession. Now is the time when we bring our stories before God and one another. Good morning. My name is Ansel Neuberger, and I've been a member of Colonial Church since 1974. No other church would have me. <laughs> this is simply a confession of my faith. I confess that I do not believe in the God that most Christians do. I confess that I do not even know how to think of God. Is God a he, a she, or an it? Merely saying the word God conjures up all kinds of false images left over from Sunday School, Dante, and Milton. I confess that I don't believe in a God that intervenes in human affairs, punishes evil, or rewards good. I do not think that hurricanes, floods, or tornadoes are acts of God or that they are evil. I don't believe God causes or cures disease. Nothing in the universe or nature is evil without the human element, as we've seen this week. When predator animals kill their prey, that is not evil. Evil requires the human touch. On the other hand, people are sometimes capable of such goodness and selflessness that I can only call it godlike. It passes my understanding. Ecclesiastes is my favorite book of the Bible because of its arresting poetry and its unflinching look at human existence. Many of the passages in the book are dark and cynical, but I find comfort in the author's ability to accept his existential fate and move on, clear-eyed and unbowed, the master of his fate, the captain of his soul. I confess the only reason I call myself a Christian is that I am in awe of the example and teachings of Jesus Christ. The fact that Jesus spoke in parables somehow distracts us from seeing how he himself is the greatest parable of all. Parables being a method of telling the truth indirectly through metaphor, truth being too bright to look at directly. With that idea in mind, I wrote the following poem, which I named Jesus is a Parable. It describes in indirect poetic terms the essence of my religion. There is a copy in your bulletin if you want to follow as I read. Jesus is a parable, a language to express matters inexpressible, like robins laid to rest. Jesus is a parable, approximately God, a song so sweet and terrible it lives outside the law. Jesus is a parable, some deity's mistake, a poem incomprehensible, the tent we cannot take. Jesus is a parable, obscure epiphany, a truth indeed unbearable, another way to see. Let me provide a word or two of explanation. The point in the first stanza is that language fails us when it comes time to express our most profound thoughts. That's why parables are needed. In the second stanza, the phrase, approximately God, conveys the idea that Jesus is as close as we can come to defining God. When I say in the third stanza that Jesus is some deity's mistake, I am pointing out that Jesus could not have been the son of the wrathful God of the Old Testament, that such a God could not have conceived Jesus on purpose. Also in the third stanza, the tent we cannot take is stolen from Emily Dickinson who says in one of her poems, the tent we cannot take is best. I take that to mean that the very best things in life are those which we can never entirely possess or take. So what does all this mean? I confess that I don't know. I don't know what the purpose of life is or even if there is a purpose. One thing, however, seems clear to me. Living your life trying to get into heaven or stay out of hell is folly. If you would live a meaningful life, try to live it 
as closely as you can according to the teachings of Jesus, realizing you will not always be able to meet that standard. Just trying is enough. Thanks for listening.